Hello and welcome to this webinar. Um, my name is John Hitchman. I'm the Student Advisor Immigration and Finance at SOAS with my colleague Chantelle Bunyas. She works in Masters Admissions and she's involved with the Immigration side of the Admissions Department. And we're here today to talk about Tier 4 General Student Visa Applications and how to make them outside the UK. The presentation lasts about 15 to 20 minutes. And um, if you have any questions throughout, if you'd like to type them into the chat screen, and then at the end of the presentation, we'll answer your questions. So feel free to tap them in, but we'll, we'll get to them at the end of this 15 minute presentation. If you find that you're having technical problems viewing the webinar, um, you may want to try opening the link in a different browser. So it may work better in another type of browser. So I'm going to start the presentation now. And then, as I said, any questions you have throughout, just tap them into the, the chat box. Okay, so uh, that's me, Student Advisor Immigration and Finance. My name is on the front of that car. And this is a web link. Um, on this web page on the SOAS website, we have some very detailed guidance that will help you um, with the tier four application, it will help you in two different ways. One of the guidance documents there is going to take you on a step-by-step -step route through the questions. Yeah. Um, the questions that you're going to be asked on the online application form, and it will tell you where to find this form and how to complete it. And any difficult questions there, the answers will, will be there or explain how to answer them for your situation. And then the other, um, bit of guidance we have there. It's going to tell you about the documents that you need to make your tier four application. This will be things like bank statements or financial documents. And um, we're going to talk about the financial requirements and those documents in quite a lot of detail in this presentation. So you can always view this presentation again. It's going to go up onto YouTube where you will be sent a link, but then please refer to this page for more detailed in-depth guidance. So this is what we're going to be talking about today, making your tier four general student visa application and how you do that, how you make the online application, where can you do that, where should you apply, when should you make your application, what documents do you need, how much money you will need, that's a big important one. Uh, we're going to, also going to talk about whether you can bring your family or not and then at the end, as I've said, if you have questions, please tap them into the text box throughout the presentation. Okay, so firstly, who can apply for tier four student visa? So in order to make a tier four application, you must have an accepted an unconditional offer at SOAS. So you'll have been sent an unconditional offer by admissions. And that means you're not waiting for anything, the results of any, any English tests or any qualifications that you're studying, you have all those results in hand and you've been given an unconditional offer. And once you have an unconditional offer, then you need 40 points to be granted the visa. Now, 30 of those points are going to be given to you for having a CAS, and that's the thing called a confirmation of acceptance for studies. And that's a document that you can request from the admissions team once you have an unconditional offer, but these CASIs won't be issued until three months before the start of your program. So our programs are going to be starting at the end of September this year. So the CAS issuing process will start at the end of June. Okay. And the 30 points for this CAS document, the CAS itself is an electronic document, details of which will be emailed to you by the admissions team. And the documents created on the UK visas and immigration computer system. So the Home Office are aware that you're going to apply UK visas and immigration are aware and you have a unique number that you can use for your visa application. And then aside from the CAS, you also need 10 points for maintenance or money. That's what UK VI refer to uh, as money. And we'll talk about how to show that you meet that requirement as we go through. So next, how do I apply? So you can use the online application system, which, as I said, we've got guidance telling you how to do it. It's pretty straightforward. It'll probably take you about, about 20 minutes to fill in the application form. 
Um, you also have to pay the immigration house surcharge. This is a charge that um, you pay it at the end as part, part of the payment process in your visa application, and it covers the cost of the National Health Service in the UK. So once you've paid this, you're entitled to access healthcare throughout your time here as a student. Now, the cost of the immigration health surcharge is currently £150, um, but it's going to go up to £300 sometime this year. We don't know exactly when. We believe it may be in September. So hopefully, if you're applying for a visa to come before September, you should pay the, smaller, the lower rate, but we can't guarantee that. And then the application fee for the visa is £348. You have to pay that as well, or the local equivalent. And as part of the process, you print a cover sheet and you submit this cover sheet, normally by post, but sometimes in person, with supporting documents. And those documents will include things like your bank statement, but we'll talk in more detail about the documents as we go through. You'll also have to submit your biometrics. So that means giving a scan of your fingerprints and also a photograph of your face. And that will be taken at a, a visa application centre and then stored on a thing called a BRP, which we'll talk about later. And you'll also have to do a brief interview, which will be done via a secure Skype line at the Visa Application Centre. That will be very brief, probably about a 10 minute long interview, just asking you simple questions like why you decided to study at SOAS and why you decided to study in the United Kingdom, but pretty straightforward stuff. And then if you're a national of certain countries, you may be required to take a TB test as well to confirm that you don't have tuberculosis. And, um, you'll be able to find out whether to do that or not via our guidance. So where can you apply? So you normally apply for your tier four visa in your country of nationality. So we've got a star next to that. The reason for that is if you have a right of residence in another country, so if you're living in a third country, not the United Kingdom, not your country, uh, and maybe you're there as a student or a worker, then you could make your visa application there. Now, if you're visiting another country as a tourist, you won't be able to apply if you have a tourist visa. You'll need a right of residence in that other country in order to make your tier four application there. And you can book an appointment at the end of your online application. OK, that's how you that's how you can go and attend to make the application. And you need to read instructions about where to go for that appointment. Um, in some countries, that's going to be somewhere quite local to you. Hopefully, it will be quite nearby. And then you attend, the, you give your biometrics, as I mentioned. You attend the interview, which will be done via the Skype line. And then you submit the cover sheet, the form, and supporting documents. And at some stage, which should be, the turnaround time should be 15 working days for this. It can be longer than that occasionally. Um, you will get your 30 day vignette. Okay. And this is a visa that's valid for 30 days, allowing you to travel to the United Kingdom in time for your studies. Once in the UK, you have 10 days, you can go and collect your biometric residence permit, which contains your biometric information that you've given. And that visa will contain the, the full length of your visa for the rest of your studies in the UK. And when should you apply? So as I mentioned, you can apply up to three months before the start of the course. So that'll be around the end of June. We'll, for most of our programs will be when you can start applying. And before you apply, there are certain things you need to think about that are very important. So firstly, you need to make sure you have all the ac academic documents that are listed on your CAS to say that th these are documents that SOAS has used as evidence to give you an offer on the place of study of the course of study that you're going on to. So maybe if you're doing a master's program, you, you sat an undergraduate degree somewhere else. So you might have the degree certificate or the transcript, something like that. You may also have an English language test that proves you can speak English to a certain level. And that will all be listed on your CAS as evidence that it will all be a document you've already provided to SOAS, but you'll need to provide the original document again to prove to as proof to get your tier four visa. You also need to make sure you meet the financial requirements and have documents that prove this. And this is something that we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail as we go through this application or webinar. Um, and so in general, the documents you require, aside from that, would be two passport photos, 
uh, your passport, normally just one, you may require to submit more than one if you have two valid passports. Um, your confirmation of acceptance for study. So this isn't a physical document, it's an electronic document, but you're gonna need this email version of the CAS to hand when you fill in your visa application. Then you're gonna need all the qualifications, as we mentioned, that are listed in your CAS as evidence. And then proof of English language ability, if it's listed in the CAS, so that could be an IELTS test, proving that you've got a certain proficiency in English. And then you need proof of maintenance, which could be bank statements, could be something else, but we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute. Now, I've mentioned at the bottom here, low risk nationals. Some people are from a country that is classified as, um, they describe it as a differentiation arrangement or you're considered a low risk national. So people from these countries don't have to provide the academic and maintenance documents. Now the guidance and the form, you're ticking boxes in the form to say that you have the academic documents and you have the money, but it's just that you're not submitting a document. So we would advise that you have those documents at home and they're all prepared and ready for action if you need them, but actually you're not gonna be submitting those. Okay, so the big question really is how much money will you need to show? So if your program is longer than eight months in, in duration, you're going to need to show the fees for your first year, just your first year, even if it's a three year, four year long program, and £11,385 for maintenance. Now, if your program is less than eight months, it will be the full fees, <coughs> excuse me, for the first year plus 1,265 for each month or partial month. So if your program was five and a half months long, you'd need 1,265 pounds times six. So the partial month, five and a half, would round it up to six months. Um, if your fees are shown as paid on the CAS, so once you've paid your fees to SOAS, you could have your CAS amended to show the fees are paid. You don't need any more evidence of that. And if you're sponsored or receiving loans, then depending on how you get this sponsorship, if you're getting some sort of scholarship by a SOAS, you may have that mentioned on your CAS. But if you're receiving loans or a scholarship, you're going to need a formal document to confirm that as well. And the kind of loan that you get would need to be an official government student loan from your home country. And if you are receiving loans or a scholarship, if they're not going to cover the full fees plus the amount you require, so maybe 11385 if it's more than eight months length of your course, then you need to show the remainder in a bank account. So um, the funds that any funds that you don't have from loans or scholarships, you show them in a bank account. Um, the money could also be held in a bank account of a parent. If you're going to use a parent's account, you need to have their permission and you need to prove your relationship to them by showing a birth certificate as well. And any funds that you show in your account or your parent's account have to be held for at least 28 days before the date that you apply for your tier four application. So at least 28 days. Longer is absolutely fine. And then can you bring your family with you? Yeah, well, if you can, if you're a postgraduate student on a programme of more than one year in length, or if you're government sponsored and on a programme of longer than six months. And when we talk about family members or dependents, the people we're talking or we're referring to are your husband, your wife, your unmarried partner, or your child under 18. Any other family members, I'm afraid you can't bring on as, as a tier four dependent, but those people could come and visit you on a standard visitor visa. And the maintenance for dependents is slightly less. So if your program is more than eight months, your dependent would need 7,605 pounds. That would be for each dependent. And if it was less than eight months, they'd need 845 pounds for each month or partial month. So that's a brief run through. Um, as I said, there'll be a link to this video again. You can watch that, get an idea of how to apply, but we also have our online guidance. And um, if you use all those resources, hopefully the visa application should be really straightforward. And we will see you at SOAS. So thanks for listening. And now, as I mentioned,
it's time for any questions that you have. So um, I'm going to let Chantel answer this question from Andy Rag. He says, currently my offer is labelled as conditional. After the submission of the transcript of my last semester and the undergraduate certificate of SOAS, and after receiving approval from Master's Admissions, will the offer be translated into unconditional? Yes, as long as you're, you know, you have been uh, awarded the grade that we mentioned in the in the offer letter, then we'll we'll revise the offer and make it unconditional. Yes. From from Lena. Yeah, sorry, I'm just reading it at the same time. Yeah, Lena, you you said you submitted your uh, your request for CAS. Well, we're going through them now. We are initially issuing. CAS is for students who start early because we have programs that start at the beginning of September and we also have students that need to attend a professional English course. So we are prioritizing these ones first and then we go through the, the, the CAS where you know the program starts on the 24th. But as John mentioned, even if you have a CAS issue and your program starts on the 24th of September, do not apply now. You have to wait until the 24th of June before you can submit your visa application. If I apply for a visa in July, June, says, says Shruti, um, if I get a visa by mid-July or end of July, then the visa is applicable for 30 days. Do I need to reach within that period? So no, the 30-day vignette, maybe I didn't make that clear enough. Um, the 30-day vignette will be, will be designed for you to come in the day that you say you're going to travel to the UK based on when your your program starts so um, you know normally that would be you could be up to 30 days before the start of your program if you apply late for your visa and it's less than 30 days till the start of your program then the vignette will start as soon as it's issued and you'll have a bit of time after the program start but hopefully that's not going to happen and everybody gets here on time so yeah you're not you decide when the 30 day period is it's not it's not just um, forced upon you. So Manish has said, does a dependent visa holder need IELTS results also? So no, the IELTS results would just be for you, the tier four applicant Manish. Your dependents would get a visa just by showing they meet the maintenance requirements and also by proving their relationship to you. So if they're your, your, your husband, wife or um, uh, unmarried partner of two years or more, you, you'd prove those relationships or your child would you provide a birth certificate and so on. Um, Anna says, if I want to use a step parent statement, how do I prove we are related? Well, in terms of a step parent, they need to be your legal guardian for UK visas and immigration to accept the statement from them. So if they actually are your legal guardian, you have a document from a court that confirms that, that would be the proof that you need. Okay, otherwise, if if that's not feasible, it will be a good idea to, if they're happy to do this to us, them to transfer the money into your account now and then let it sit in your account for 28 days before you apply. Um, Hassan has mentioned, should accommodation fees be mentioned in the CAS or application for Home Office? Unfortunately, because accommodation fees at SOAS are paid to a third party, so our halls, are actually run by uh, an organisation called Sanctuary Housing, then we can't mention any payments in the CAS. So anything you pay towards accommodation can't be deducted from your visa application. So the answer today is no, I'm afraid. And then Hui Wing has said, when, when you say we need to prove our, the amount of money in our parents' bank account, is birth papers suitable? So yeah, a birth certificate would be fine. And also a letter from your parent to give permission for you to use their funds as well. And then we've got a question from Hannah. In order to obtain an unconditional offer from SOAS, do we need to send a hard copy of our diploma by post or is a scan of the original sufficient? I'll let um, yeah, no, tell Yeah, we don't expect hard copy because that would be too dangerous if you're sending in the post and uh, it's get lost because you wouldn't need that for your visa application anyway. So a scan of the original document is sufficient. It has to be in colour and you send it to master's admissions at soas.ac.uk and it'll be fine. Thank you. Right. And Jake says, is IELTS needed if I received the required grade mentioned as a condition for my school's English exam, Chantel? I'm not sure whether that's PG, uh, is that an undergrad or postgrad? 
I don't know. Jake, yeah. get back to us and let us know if you're an undergrad or postgrad student, and then we can we can advise you about that. And then Sarah says, do I have to take the English proficiency test if I've done the international baccalaureate with English as my first language? Uh, sometimes we can uh, we can look at the grades that you have in the IB. So I would suggest that you send a copy of it, and then we will just uh, assess it and then get back to you and let you know and confirm whether you need an IELTS or not. Okay, and then um, Rahi says, do I need to show a certain amount of money in my per personal parents' personal bank account, even if I'm funded through the SOAS Research Studentship? Uh, so essentially, if your um, funding from the SOAS Research Studentship is, covers your full fees and £11,385 for the first year, no, you don't. And if you, that should all be confirmed on your CAS. But if the studentship doesn't cover your full £11,385 or the full fees, then you'll need to just make up the difference with your own funds. So whatever that difference is. So Ho Chang is saying, hello, John, my undercut transcript will be issued at the beginning of July after submitting my evidence of transcript to get an unconditional offer. Will it be too late to apply for the tier four visa in July or August? So no, it shouldn't be too late. Um, as I said, they, they, the turnaround time that UKVI advertises is 15 working days. It's generally, they stick to that. Occasionally in some countries it might take a bit longer, but essentially if you had about a month, for most people that should be long enough. So even if you're applying in August, you should just about hopefully have it in time to get here. But you know, ideally, apply as soon as as soon as you're able to, really. Okay, Dina says, um, I'm a dual citizen living in an, a non-low risk country, but I only hold a low risk country passport. Can I apply with a low risk student application? So yeah, that's fine. You can use your low risk country passport. <coughs> if that's the passport that you travel on, I think. Yeah, I think that's funny. Apply as the national of the low risk country. Ah, but Dina, this is the important bit that I've suddenly realized. So because you're applying as a low risk national outside of a low risk country, you still have to show the evidence. So even though your visa will be issued on a low risk national passport, um, you still need to show the full amount of funds. You won't be considered low risk because you're not in a low risk country. So Selim is asking, how much time do I have to find an external funder? I mean, again, yeah, you know, it, you could be making a visa application probably right up until the end of August, Selim, and, and still get here in good time. You know, if you're once you're getting into September, you're probably getting quite close to the wire. People can, you know, we'd like you to be here and join us at the start of Welcome Week so you can get the most out of, of the week and meet all your, all your tutors and also um, get involved with other activities and find out how the services at SOAS work. But if you can't, it is possible to enrol late and normally you can roll up to a couple of weeks really from the start of Welcome Week. So if, if it comes to that, you might still be able to get here. but. Um, at, at some stage, you know, if you're starting to miss classes, I think it will be problematic. So probably stay in touch with us about that if you're going to be delayed. Get in touch with admissions about that. Um, so Marine says, I've received a conditional offer from SOAS. I must submit my IELTS score in 13 days. Let's assume that I was required to do a pre-sessional English course. What is the best way to do that with the CAS? Would it be possible to get one CAS instead of two? In this way, I finish the pre-sessional course and then start the MSc programme. So this is all based on the English level that you require. And I think if you're going on to a... If you if your assessor is requiring yeah. a four weeks or an eight week pre-sessional, then we can issue a joint CAS or one CAS. So you don't, you know, you can, once you finish the pre-sessional course, then you can, you can go on to the master programme without submitting a fresh visa application. But if, you're, if your IELTS scores 112 week processional, then you will have to apply. We can't uh, issue a joint CAS and you will have to uh, have two CASs, one for the processional 12 weeks and then one for the master afterwards. So, so Marianne, if you have to do that, we will be providing some extra support for you 
to make that visa application in the UK towards the end of your pre-sessional. So don't worry if you if that's something you have to do. Every year we have a, a few students that do that and we can we can help with that. Um, so Kyra or Kira is saying, if you are designated as a part-time student doing a two-year postgrad program holding, holding an unconditional offer, will I need to reapply for the visa during the institutional summer or no, or would the visa cover the full duration of the entire program even as part time. So the visa would cover the full duration of the program as part time. Um, just a reminder, um, tier four part time is new this year and it's, it's something that we might have some students taking up. It's important to remember that you can't bring dependents on tier four part time. And, it, and this wasn't in my presentation, but and also that you can't work. You don't have any right to work in the UK, whereas a normal tier four student at this level of study would be able to work for 20 hours a week and you can't change your mode of studies either in the uk you have to to leave the yeah you wouldn't be able to switch into full time yeah. hassan said should accommodation fees be mentioned on the cas so we've kind of covered that already no we can't mention them i'm afraid you you just have probably it's better if if you've just got enough money to pay for your accommodation don't pay your accommodation until you get to the or until you've applied for the visa so A Ram Park says, um, hello, I'm currently completing an MA at SOAS, but I will be enrolled in one of PhD in September. Does this mean I'll have to apply for a fresh tier four visa in my, my country? No, not necessarily. Um, you could apply for that visa in the UK as long as you are finishing your master's program in September. So get in touch with registry to, or actually get in touch with the doctoral school about the CAS and then they will refer you to us for advice, but you can get in touch with student advice and wellbeing. Um, as a recipient of a SOAS research studentship, do I need to pay ta any amount of income tax? Well, students are not exempt from income tax, but you don't, if you've got a part-time job, Rahi, you probably won't be required to pay any, but the threshold for income tax is 11 and a half thousand pounds a year this year. Um, Manish is asking, can a dependent visa be applied at the same time as a student visa? It can. You can do it at the same time. Um, it's a separate online application, so it's not all on the same form. It's probably a good idea to do the main tier four application first and then the um, dependence applications. Jessica is asking, so basically if I show my official full transcripts and get a paper from my university state and I'm officially finished studying, then my offer becomes unconditional, which means I get a cat. So I'll let Chantel. Well, yes, that. in theory, but we, we need to <coughs> see uh, if your transcript uh, mentioned that your degree is being awarded, then that's fine. We don't need uh, uh, any more, you know, documentation from the university. Otherwise, yes, we, we need something uh, stating that you have officially uh, completed your study and being awarded your degree. Uh, can I, and Lucian said, can I apply presenting TEFL instead of IELTS? Well, you can, but again, you're, you have to reach a certain level of English before we can uh, assess uh, your, uh, your, the scores on the TEFL. And in which case, we will, if we accept the TEFL certificate and you meet our English requirement, then we will we will put a, a, a paragraph on the CAS saying that you are exempt from submitting further evidence of English. We can do that as, as a higher education provider. Yeah. Um, Subhutan is asking, will I be offered accommodation after my offer becomes unconditional? Um, you can you can be uh, apply for you can apply for accommodation if you have paid a deposit. And uh, you know, and and it can be maybe I don't know how that works, whether you put on the waiting list or not. But as long as long as you paid the deposit and you've accepted your offer, you can you can apply for accommodation even if the offer is conditional. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I I, uh, I know about you because I know you are um, you've applied for a scholarship for SOAS and you have a 12 week. At the moment, the the uh, you have a 12 week processional to um, to complete. I am not sure if that is covered by the scholarship, so you need to discuss this with the scholarship or, uh, at SOAS and see what they say. Um, 
If you want to attend the procession or uh, anyway and pay for it, that's fine as well. You have to apply separately to, to if sales. But you need to do that very, very quickly because the procession starts on the 29th of June. So you have very little time to uh, to apply and, and then, you know, for your visa, etc. So William says, how much time should I allow for the visa to be processed and returned? Should be 15 working days should be the maximum, um, but you can check local processing times on the UK VI um, visa processing time website. We've got a link to that in our guidance. So Jake, you're an undergrad student, but well, I can't remember. What was that question from Jake? Uh, I can't remember now. Yeah. Quite a few. Sorry, Jake, we've, we've really got a bit overwhelmed with questions here. If you'd like to email undergrad admissions, at soas.ac.uk and they'll be able to help you with your, your query, Jake. So apologies for that. Um, Manish has said, do we need a confirmed ticket to be booked before we apply for the visa? No, you don't need to do that. You could just step, make it clear when you plan to travel. So that's fine. So Rahi's mentioning that the, the, the scholarship they're going to receive as Soas studentship says the money will be paid uh, in transferred to me when I'm fully enrolled and have a bank account. What is it considered? What are you considered to be fully enrolled? Do I need to arrive well before the beginning of term to enrol? Well, enrolment takes place during Welcome Week, so you can enrol that week. Um, the bank account needs to be in the UK or British bank branches in the India. So uh, it's probably going to make more sense to get a UK bank account. It's quite easy to do that once you're enrolled and you have a bank letter in the UK. Um, so it's a good idea to bring for that for that sort of period between arriving in the UK and opening a bank account, which could take take a week or so to open. So you could be looking at a couple of weeks. It's a good idea to have a credit card or some availability to money from your home country. Please don't bring lots and lots of cash with you. So that's not such a good idea. But traveler's checks could be OK, but otherwise a credit card or a debit card from your home country that you can use in the UK would be a great idea until you've actually opened an account here. Yeah, the Prirana, uh, it's about, uh, said, do I finish my bachelor degree requirement? The convocation is in August, and therefore I will receive the degree certificates only by August. So will the transcript plus an official letter stating that I have completed the degree requirement suffice? I'm not too sure where you are currently studying, but if you, uh, for example, we do a set provisional degree certificate from India, and, and that's fine. That and the transcript will be okay for visa application and for us to um, to issue the CAS. Okay, Selim says, I hold a PhD offer and keep looking for an external funding option. May I learn how much time I have to find it? Well, if we're talking about applying for the visa, Selim, then yeah, I think you, you ideally need to be applying for the visa by the end of August, really, to get here on time to start. You know, the absolute latest would probably be the beginning of September. So Ashley says, do I need to take any English proficiency test? Well, that isn't mentioned under my conditions required. I'm a postgrad student. Uh, no, if it's not mentioned in the offer letter, then the, you don't need to, um, to submit English evidence, no. Uh, Hassan, uh, I think we also touch on that question. How long does SOAS require normally to issue the CAS? As I said, we've started issuing CASs for students who start uh, early, uh, early September, or for professional students, and then we take it, uh, you know, according to the date the, the request is being issued, uh, is being submitted. So it depends on when, if you have even submitted your CAS request. So it could take a couple of weeks. We are, we are, you know, there's quite a few requests at the moment pending. So, but we're going through through them as quickly as we can. Okay, Anna. Anna says there's no British embassy in my country residence. How do I send my biometrics? Well, for some countries, if there's no British embassy, you may be required to travel to another country. For instance, people in Iran would travel to the United Arab Emirates or to Turkey to make their visa application, but also there may be facilities for um, doing that in your country, even if there's no embassy there, and you may be doing stuff by post. So what I suggest doing is going to 
the British Embassy website for your country and then seeing what the arrangements are for visas. It should be quite clearly laid out there, but if it's not, um, then get in touch with us at SOAS. Okay, and then Majiba is asking, if we need translations for financial documents, should we wait to show 28 days? So yeah, that's a really good point, Majiba. If you're going to get your documents translated into English, because they're not in English, then it's a good idea to wait until the money is there, the statements are ready to be used, and then get them translated because they'll need to be an accurate translation. Yeah. Uh, Rahi, that question actually, uh, you know, it's a, the, uh, you know, I now hold a conditional offer from SOAS and was required how copy evidence of having completed an MPhil. I assume that you're applying for PhD and they have different requirements. And uh, so I would say that if you want an unconditional offer, you need to get in touch with the, the doctor school. Uh, as soon as you can, and then they will be the one issuing cases, not not me. Okay, so Manish is saying, can a dependent visa be applied for at the same time along with the student visa? Well, pretty much the same time. It's a separate application. As I said, we suggest you do the, the main applicant tier four application first. Do you need a ticket? No, we've mentioned that you don't. Uh, you you. Uh, says, may I know CAS, if CAS is equal to a conditional offer document? No, it is, uh, well, technically it's not equivalent, but <coughs> you would not be issued a CAS unless you have a conditional offer. Okay, um, yeah, Kyra, Kyra, Kyra here is asking if the United States is low risk. Yeah, it's low risk, Kyra, but please check online, check our guidance, and you can find out more about this. Hannah's asking if we can use mo multiple bank accounts. Um, in order to meet the maintenance requirements. Yes, you can. They need to cover the same 28-day period and you need to make sure on each day the funds don't drop below the required amount. So if your course is more than eight months, £11,385. Uh, Amira, the classes for the MA programme does that start a week after enrolment. So 24th of September uh, week is registration week and, and uh, the classes start the following Monday. Okay, Yahi's asking if you're a sponsor by a scholarship, do you have to pay your tier four application fee? In general, yes, you do, Yahi, mm -hmm. unless you're a UK government sponsored student on a Chevening, Marshall, or Commonwealth scholarship. If you're one of those um, scholars, then you don't pay the application fee and you don't pay the immigration health surcharge, but all other scholars will do. So Matt is asking, once you've applied for and received, the there's the visa valid for the duration of your studies? Um, and if and he says, he'll be assuming it'll be as so as for up to three years. So yes, Matt, your visa will be valid for the length of your programme of studies for the three years plus four months at the end. Rahi, I think Rahi, you might want to get in touch with us about this. It sounds quite complex. So. If you want to drop a line to... But it's a PhD student as well, so we need to contact... Uh, yeah, if you get in touch uh, with doctoral school admissions, yeah. and I think about this one, because this is a bit of a complex mm -hmm. question for the for the chat here. So, Wasini, you're talking about coming to study the pre-sessional programme, uh, the pre-sessional course, and you can get some immigration advice from, from Delia Lozano, who has probably been in touch with you about your accommodation, about your CAS, She'll be able to help you with, with that query about dependent on a pre-sessional course. Uh, Maureen said, when I do when I do the pre-sessional, do I have to receive IELTS afterwards? No, you don't. Uh, hopefully, after, at the end of the pre-sessional, you will meet our English requirement and you can go to the main course, the main program. Yeah, just to, to reiterate, if you, your 30-day vignette will be 30 days leading up to start of your program but you can define when that starts you can you can change your date of travel so you basically you can control when the 30 days start so don't worry if you apply for your visa in mid-july you just put your travel date in september or whenever you plan to come your 30 days will start then so don't worry then yeah, ma'am just quickly to wrap it up yes you if you are going to renew your passport it's much better to uh, wait uh, to request the CAS until you have your new passport issued because if we issue a CAS with your old passport number on it, we will have to update it, amend it. So it's much better to wait 
until until uh, you know you have a new passport. So William is asking if the biometrics is something we do in home country or in England. So that's something you'll do in your home country, William, if you're applying in your home country. So Dina is asking, is there a visa for someone to visit their spouse who is on on a visit visa? Um, so visit their spouse who is on a student visa. I mean, yeah, that would just be a visit visa. So that will be a six month long standard visitor visa, which you can apply for. Depending on nationality, the person visiting the student is, they either have to apply at home or they can apply at the border when you turn up at the airport in the United Kingdom. Um, so Manish has asked if your wife, if him and his wife are staying with relatives in London, do you need to show maintenance fees in, in the, the bank account? Yeah, you, you still need to show those, I'm afraid, even if you've got somewhere to stay in London. Rahi's asking if you, need to, if you need to submit any medical reports apart from the TB reports. No, the TB test would be the only thing you need to submit, and that's only for people coming from countries that require that test. You can find out about that online. Uh, Darren, I'm just reading your question about uh, you completed an MPhil in the UK a few years ago, and your course as well as will be an MSc. In terms of uh, progression requirement that might be a little difficult so we will have to look at your application because normally you have to go up a level not down a level so maybe we you can email master's admissions about that and then I look into it and uh, and answer your query directly um, the manager said that the funds maintenance funds in the account need to be shown in liquid cash or mutual Holdings be also be acceptable. So no, they need to be, yeah, liquid cash. They need to be money that you could take out at any time, not money that's held in any sort of investments. Can I also just mention something about, you know, showing evidence of funding? Is it's only <coughs> your parents or your own money in, in your own bank account, not your uncle or your grandmother or anybody else, any other relative? It is very important that you know you you show you. Okay, thanks. That's the end of the questions. Thanks very much for um, attending the webinar today and um, see you next time.